Okay, so in today's math lesson, it's all about distributing uh, expressions. So let's start talking about factored form and expanded form. This guy here is in factored form because we have a factor sitting right outside those parentheses. And what we're going to do, we're going to change this thing into, using the distributive property, change this into a more expanded form of the same expression. <clears throat> but let's first take a look at what this, thing, this is saying. We're saying that we have three sets or three groups of x plus y. Now, if I was to draw that out, here's an nice little x, here's a y, all right? But I need three sets of these guys. So here's, here's my first set of x plus y. Now, here's my second set of x plus y. There it is. And here's my third set of x plus y. There they are. So I have three sets total, which is what this is describing. Now, if I were to reorder these guys, what do I have? Well, I notice that I have one, two, three x's. There they are, right? So one, two, three x's. And I have three y's. Y, Y, and Y. There they are. Notice I have the same number of X's and the same number of Y's by the time I'm done. My tape diagrams are the same distance, so I know both expressions, or both uh, diagrams anyway, are equivalent. Question is, what's the expression that relates best to this particular tape diagram? Because this guy's for this guy. What is this guy? Well, it looks to me like I have three X's added to that. Three y's. Now this is called the expanded form. All right, so this is more expanded. Now I'm using the distributive property because what's happening is I'm taking that factor of three and I'm distributing it to the x and the y. So therefore, if I have <clears throat> x plus y three times, I have three x's and I have three y. Okay, and I add those together, and that's what we're working on today. So. Same thing happens and with a similar expressions. So instead of drawing things out, I can simply say, hey, you know what? I'm going to take that 4 using the distributive property. And since I have 2h plus g and I need four sets of those, I'm going to wind up by the time I'm done with 8h and 4g. Okay. And if I were to draw that out, sure, I would have four of these guys and four of these guys. Four 2h's give me 8h. And 4Gs gives me, well, 4G. And there they are. Now, if someone were to give me uh, the value of H and G, I could certainly evaluate this expression. But as it stands now, it needs to stay exactly where it is because I can't go any further. Okay? Then they give us some fun ones here to deal with. So, <clears throat> if I have eight sets of H plus 3, okay, my 8 would be distributed to both the h and the 3, that factor of h. So 8 times h gives me 8h plus 8, 8 times 3 gives me 24. Okay? This one's interesting too. This 5 is being distributed to both of these terms. And so if I have 5 times 3x would give me 15x. Added to that, a 5 times 9 gives me 45y. And there they are. Okay? And things get even more interesting when we have multiple variable, variables inside of a term, okay? Like these next guys here. This guy here, I'm <clears throat> this j is being multiplied by both of these guys, or both of these terms. And according to my tape diagram, they are being added together. So what's happening here, I have j being multiplied by 7k plus 12m. And so I can distribute that j. Now watch your order. Remember, variables need to be in alphabetical order. So that value, the 7 needs to come first, and j comes to 4k. You say j, k, there they are. Right? And then I have my 12, and I have my j before my m in this case. Okay. All right. And then that last one here, again, watch your order. I'm going to distribute that a, even though it's a variable sitting outside, that's still getting distributed the same way. So I have 9AB plus a 13A. Okay? That's the deal, folks. That's what we worked on today. All right? Have a good one. Thanks so much. Take care.